opportunity to meet another one of our global ripple makers within the one drop movement community i'm delighted to be back here with the burnout coach you've seen him at ripple fest if you've joined for ripple fest 24 you will have heard this amazing man who's sat in front of us right now who brought his skills and expertise to us on how you can really avoid the burnout patterns that keep coming to us when you're in love with what you do or even if you're not in love with what you do burnout can be something that that sneaks up on us and Phil is doing the most amazing work all over the world so I want to bring him into the community and introduce you to him right now Phil welcome to One Drop. Thank you very much for such a lovely lovely welcome uh, Sammy that's really kind of you thank you. Well, I've been through burnout and guys and girls, if you've ever been through burnout, get it in the comments below. Uh, you went through your own burnout. In fact, your burnout was uh, took you to the brink of even a suicidal thoughts. So, I mean, that was a very yeah. serious burnout. Um, I mean, it's obvious that you went through a burnout, but tell us a little bit about um, why you do what you do now, because you could have just burned out and then you could have gone straight back to doing it. So why have you made it your global mission to support other people uh, through that that? awful thing that happens to us even when we don't know it so it began when as part of my burnout uh, cycle the journey I met a homeless guy and the homeless guy uh, had been through all sorts of things in his life you know at the end of the day all of us the majority of us are only a couple of steps away potentially of becoming you know homeless ourselves yeah. through divorce death whatever uh and and my burnout meant I couldn't go back to my corporate career I, I just couldn't mentally or physically and so I spent a lot of time with this guy we struck up a rapport we struck up a friendship and as part of that process I learned so much about him but I also learned about myself mm -hmm. I learned about my values my beliefs the things that made me tick and the burnout process meant that because I couldn't go back to my corporate career and I wasn't sure what to do at that stage, I kind of felt through the, the meeting with the homeless guy uh, who still had a purpose, even though he was homeless, um, that I needed to utilise that burnout experience for the benefit of others, you know, for ensuring and helping people to either recover quicker than I did and, and the journey that I went on so that they didn't go on the same journey or to better still avoid burnout in the first place. So these days I spend a lot of time talking to people about how they're feeling. I'm a, I'm a really passionate a, a mental health uh, advocate, mental well-being, particularly in the workplace. Yeah. And you often find that people have uh, two personalities and that's certainly how I was. I was one person in the workplace. I was one person at home. And they really clashed. Uh, and the more they clashed, the greater the stress became. Mm. Uh, and so I spend loads of time now talking to people about the stress they experience uh, in the workplace. And that could be from a variety of different things. But most of the time, it's, it's a clash of their own inner beliefs and values that they've acquired through their life, through their childhood with what they do, what they now do every day. And the longer that goes on, the, the bigger the stress. And obviously, post pandemic, you know, people are trying to recover business profits. Uh, people need to work longer hours. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, uh, the crisis we're in at the moment, cost of living crisis. There's all sorts of financial issues that people take to work with them. Mm. Can't yeah, really you don't leave it at or... home you carry it with yeah, you it's with you. Pack, isn't it certainly is it's with you 24 mm. hours a day at the end of the day we can't just leave things at the front door and they go away they're in our minds all the time and the thing with burnout you know you've burnt out yourself sammy so you you you'll know even probably more than i do but actually one of the things that happens with burnout is that there's a pattern to it yeah. And that pattern is there because we hold those intrinsic values, those intrinsic beliefs. But actually, we don't often realize that we're carrying them. We don't know. You know, it's not like you wake up every Tuesday thinking, now, what value have I got today? What's my belief next week? We just don't do that. Yeah. But actually, when you do do that work, 
and you do think about it, you talk it through with somebody, either a coach, somebody who's you know really close to you, those things, it makes you realise why certain things have happened in your life, most often as a pattern. You know, we relive similar experiences unless we change. If we do the same thing all the time, there is no change. So we yeah, have to realise that and, and implement it ourselves. Yeah, as you're speaking, you know, I'm, I'm visualising, you know, like these little, um, almost like a Russian doll, you know, you're adding another layer of burnout, another layer of burnout, another layer of burnout, another layer of burnout. And of course, yeah. like, I know what's true for me is that I didn't I didn't recognize it as burnout I thought it was weakness I thought it was weakness to be tired I thought it was weakness to take a break I thought that it was weakness to give myself self-care and because everybody else around me as a model for me was working 18 to 20 hours a day they were pouring themselves into the business I felt that if I wasn't doing I thought that's what successful was I felt exactly the same measuring that as you did um you know maybe those of you watching now you can associate with that have you been through this as well like you're looking at other people and then you feel guilty when you're not working you think oh i can't be as successful as them because that's what success looks like and so we start to measure ourselves and we create all those layers and now you're just this big mush of layers and it takes that one straw to break the camel's back then and it could be totally unrelated couldn't it it's just like bang definitely. house of cards comes crashing down i know that was true for me and it was definitely oh. true for you Most so definitely. phil what would you say is um a tip that you can give to our ripple makers today like they're out there they're wanting to make an even bigger impact what would your advice be uh, for them to, to something for them to concentrate on today i think the, the key thing uh I can leave people with that's that's a very quick thing that they can do is if they're feeling just stressed every so often, that's not burnout. It's just regular pressure that our bodies are designed to cope with. But if you find that you're stressed every single day Mm. for the same reasons, for exactly the same thing, basically that's going to kill you. It might not kill you tomorrow. Yeah, it's in your nervous system. It's eating away. You don't you don't yeah. realize the effect it has on you. Adrenaline, cortisol, those, those things that are designed to fight flight stuff. If they're there all the time, they're not designed to be there all the time. They mm-hmm. have an impact mm-hmm. on your heart, your head, your mm-hmm. body, all sorts of stuff. So you're shortening your life. The key thing, recognize that and basically get away from it. Whatever it is that's causing that is not where you should be yeah don't necessarily run away from it straight away give some thought about what you want to do Mm -hmm. think about it think how you want to live your life but if you just stay there you know if if you were burnt in a fire you know in in a fire in your living room you wouldn't keep your hand in there would you Uh, no you know you you would do something about it and the same thing here if you're burning with stress do something about it that's Make brilliant, Phil. What Make I'm hearing change. is for to get quiet, to get quiet, close your eyes, get quiet. Maybe you could do this with us now. Close your eyes, get quiet. And just notice if there is something that is constantly on your mind, that's constantly like, that, that's like weighing on you. What is that thing? What is that thing? Because if that is zing all the time, as you said, Phil, if it's doing it once in a while, <laughs> that's that's just stress. But if it's doing it every day or all throughout the day, every day, then I suppose it's a choice, isn't it? You either yeah. do something about it, a positive action to move yourself either away from it or towards something that's going to help you yeah. or you die. I mean, they're basically the two options. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know you're, and, and, you're and you improving are. a day of your life for every day that it's consuming you that's definitely. another day you might as well just chalk off of your existence on this planet most definitely most definitely and wow. you, you, owe it, you owe it to yourself to look after your well-being you owe it to your partner you owe it to your children your yeah. grandchildren your parents your friends you owe it to to not keep going through that you know life isn't designed to be like that Uh, yeah so don't let it be don't let it be there are plenty of other things you can do work somewhere else build your own business 
go on a, a tour around the world, whatever it is, do what you enjoy, do what you're passionate. Mm, mm, mm. It's like moving the opposite spirit, isn't it? It's, you know, when you have that thing that's happening. So what would the opposite of that be? So guys, whatever it is that's buzzing around in your mind, uh, you know, you, if you're going to keep your hand in the fire, it is going to burn you. So what is the opposite to so the thing that is causing you that stress? What, is, what would be the opposite of that? What, what, would, what would you most love? What would you most love? And if it is to, to move away from that, then you're clearly being given that the body is being given the signs and your body will stop you somehow. <laughs> it might start with a cold and then it will just keep getting worse and worse as mine did. It started with headaches. It started with little chest pains before it became debilitating, hospitalized chest pains with suspected heart attacks. So guys, don't go there. Don't go there because you never know at what point is the tipping point where it will be irreversible which was part of my story. Phil, what you're doing is absolutely incredible. It's so needed. How can people reach out to you? So I tend to live on LinkedIn. Anybody can message me on LinkedIn and I'll reply. Uh, my email address is philip at worklife180.com. Okay. So I'll make um, sure that all that information is up in the, the description with this. Um, um, this and, and I offer a, a sort of a, an initial free introduction call okay where people can get to know me i can yeah. get to know them to see whether i can help them either recover or to mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know prevent their burnout mm. and I, I work with companies as well to try and prevent yeah. burnout and that for me is prevention is better than cure absolutely and, uh, so, absolutely you know I, I i contact companies and they contact mm -hmm. me as well mm -hmm. uh, so if you're in a company talk to your HR yeah. people and get them to reach out to me as well yeah perfect all right well just as we wrap up today's spotlight Phil how can we help you who are you looking to connect with or like you're looking to speak what sort of opportunities can we look out for you and and keep you in mind when when those things come up thank you so so these days I do try and uh, speak I've uh, spoken on people's podcasts which is always great I'm looking to maybe create my own podcast which would be equally great but yeah, speaking opportunities to talk to people, to give them yeah. the benefit of my experience, give them sort of tips yeah. and, and tricks to, to help their own mental well-being. So any speaking opportunities are great. Um, and so I've, summits I've, that are about wellness and yeah. uh, certainly like connected to business, I would imagine, more connected to business. Um, yeah, that's yeah. my background. Corporate, yeah, yeah. Corporate yeah. career. Yeah. Right, guys, you heard it here. Keep a lookout. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears open uh, for opportunities where you can support Philip. And I'm sure that he'll support you back. So it's a game of I'll go first. Who do you know that you can recommend for Phil to talk on their summit or their podcast or their webinar? Or maybe they're running a program or a course and he would be that perfect cherry on the cake to, to bring in and be a part of that event. Please connect them. Uh, Phil, thank you so much for coming and dropping in with us again. We, we just had the pleasure of you speaking at Ripple Fest and, and doing a longer session with everybody. So guys, make sure you go and, um, and watch the uh, August 2022 Day 2 Ripple Fest and you'll find Phil on that session. Phil, thank you for dropping in with us today. Thank you so much, Sammy. Thank, thank you. you. And guys and girls, we'll be back with another Ripple Making Spotlight. We're live at 11.15 a.m. UK time each and every day to feature Ripple Makers from all over the world who could be your next best collaboration, your next best joint venture, your next best client, partner. All kinds of opportunities come from this. So show up and you be in this seat maybe yourself one day. <laughs> so take care, have a wonderful day, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next Spotlight. See you soon. Thanks, Sonny.